Hey, it's Harker from Play. Today we're going to create a floating action button menu. We're going to do this with liquid glass so the items in the menu will morph out of one another and then back into one another. This was all inspired by a prototype created by a user in our community. And we loved it so much we wanted to create a tutorial showing you how to accomplish the same thing. Let's start from scratch here and the first thing I want to do just to make sure you can see the whole interaction is add a background image. So with my page selected, Click A, open the quick add menu, and I've already searched for image there. We can press return to add it to our page. Now let's just set the height and width both to fill. And now I'm gonna pin this to my page and I'm gonna set the depth to zero. This is just making it the background image. So it's always going to be on the page, filling the entire page. And now I'm just gonna double click on the image and we can select one. In this case, let's do this one. Excellent. So now that we have our background image, let's start building out our buttons. Now I want to do this with stacks. So I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut S and we can just draw a stack. Let's make sure and set the height and width. Let's do like 64 and 64. Let's add some corner radius there. Great. Now inside this stack, I'm going to add a SF symbol. So I'm going to press B and you can see we've added that there. Now let's double click on the SF symbol and let's change it to something else. In this case, I'm going to do a plus icon. Great. Now we can style that icon. Maybe I want it to be large scale, bold weight. Great. Now I want it to be in the center of this button. So I'm going to select the stack instead, and we can just rename it main button. So we know what we're selecting and I'm going to change the alignment properties here. So let's do center alignment and center distribution. So now it's right in the middle. The last thing we need to do is just remove the background and add glass. So down here, we have the glass, just flip it on. And now there we go, we have that glass effect. Excellent. Okay, so that's our main button. Now I need two more of these buttons. So I'm gonna, with the selected, do Command D twice. For one of these, let's make this a like button and make this a thumbs up. And then for the main button, let's make this a dislike button and let's do thumbs down. Now I'm just gonna select all of these and command G to group them. Now what happened here? They're not in a normal position that we expected. That's because Play saw where they were on the canvas and assumed we wanted a Z stack. We don't, so we can just change it to a V stack and now we can do height and width set to auto. Great. Now in this stack that we can rename to be reactions, Let's just increase the gap spacing. So I'm gonna do 32 for now. We're gonna undo this in a second, but this is gonna help us have a vision of what we'd like to do in interaction mode. So now we have these three buttons inside this vertical stack. Each of them have liquid glass applied. And if we want them to morph into one another, we need to add this whole stack into a glass effect container. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna add a glass effect container to my page right here. Now I'm gonna take my reactions and just drag it in there. Now you can see when I dragged it in and let go, it's placed somewhere in the middle. I just need to select it again and make sure that my offset X and offset Y are both set to zero. So it's gonna be in the top left corner. Now we can select our glass effect container and we can set both the height and the width to be auto. So it's just gonna be hugging our stack that has all of our buttons in it. Excellent. So the last thing I want to do is just place this down here. So I'm going to pin it to the bottom corner. Then in my margin slider, I am going to add some bottom margin and then let's just maybe add 24 additional points of margin. Okay. So this is our final state for lack of a better word. Once we tap this button, this is what we want it to look like. But by default, we don't want it to look like this. By default, we just want to see this one plus button. And when we tap it, we want these reactions to appear. So let's style that. I'm going to grab my reactions stack right here. And I want to set the gap so that all of these items are on top of one another. So in this case, that is going to be not zero. Now you can see there's just no uh, gap in between them. It's starting to morph, kind of cool. But instead, we want it to be negative 64. So now they're right on top of each other. Now this would be good, except now you can see all of the SF symbols are just stacked, looking very messy. So I'm going to go into my like and dislike, select both of these SF symbols, and I'm going to set their opacity to zero. So now it just looks like we have one button here with liquid glass. Now we're ready to go into interaction mode. 
So let's select that button. Make sure to select the button itself because that's what you're always gonna wanna tap instead of the whole reaction stack or glass effect container, main button itself, and go into interaction mode. Now on here, we can either do this with a tap trigger and we are checking whether it's the first tap or the second tap with a toggle variable. But to make things super easy today, I am just going to do a toggle tap trigger. This is all of that functionality built in for you. We just have to put one set of actions for this first tap and another set of actions for the second tap. I can go ahead and delete these. Okay, <clears throat> so the things we need to do, number one, we need to increase that opacity of both of those symbols back up to 100%. And then we also need to set the gap spacing of the reaction stack back to that 32 value we initially found. That is going to create the bounce effect where all of the items are visible. So on this first tap, let's go ahead and do that. Let's do a set, pro oh, not set preview, set property. Set property action. We are gonna first target this SF symbol one in the like section. Let's make sure the property we're doing is opacity, changing that value to 100%. We can also turn on animate if we'd like. And then duplicate that. Let's change this one to this other SF symbol one. We probably could have done a better job with naming these, but that's okay. And make sure the opacity again is zero. And then one more set property action. Again, I could duplicate it like I just did, but I'm just go ahead and add it again here. This time we want to target that reaction stack. The property we're changing is gap and the value is going to be 32. And this one, we definitely want that animate on because we don't want it to snap. We want it to morph out. So just by doing that, now I'm going to double tap. And now when we click that, you can see they morph out exactly what we want them to do. Now, the last other thing is I maybe want this to turn maybe 45 degrees. So it looks like an X instead. So let's add one more. Command D to duplicate the set property action. This time we will target main button self here. And this time we are changing the rotation Z, which is a rotation flat on paper along the Z axis. And we want this to be, let's say 45 degrees. Great, okay, let's try that one more time. Now on our iOS device, double tap to reset, tap. You can see it rotates plus they morph out. If we wanted to see this super, super clearly, we can take this, this gap spacing one, which again, that is what's actually expanding the menu here. Let's just set the duration to be like pretty long so we can see it better. So now I tap, you can see they morph out. Pretty cool. But I do want that to go back to its original value here. Excellent. Now, one little quick tip you can see here, all of our actions are using the exact same animation settings. So I can just select all of them rather than having to change each one of them one by one, right click and wrap them in an animate block. Now all of them will use those same animation settings here. Again, there is no difference. But now we need to get to the closing part. So we're going to add a bunch of other actions on this second tap. We just need to basically reverse all of these other things. So we need to reverse the opacity of both of those symbols. We need to reverse the gap spacing of the reactions and we need to reverse the rotation. So let's go ahead and add a reset all properties action. This one is going to target reactions and we can go ahead and turn on animate there. And then I'm gonna duplicate this for this next one. Let's reset the properties for symbol one. Reset all properties, we'll just reset every single property. So we did opacity. This is going to reset the opacity and the gap and the scale. Every other property that might be applied to one of these objects through interaction mode, reset all properties, we'll reset it. So reactions are resetting, symbol one resetting. Now we need the other symbol one to reset. And then lastly, we need this main button to reset. Again, we could select these and right click, wrap them in an animate block here. Okay, so now when I tap, they expand and when I tap again, they morph back in. Now you could play around with some of these settings. So maybe we want the gap spacing to take a little bit longer. So let's pull it out of here and let's just set the duration to be, let's say 0.65. Maybe we want the same thing here. Maybe for this resetting all properties for reactions, we can pull that out and let's do the same thing. Let's just make this a little bit longer. 
Maybe this will look cool, maybe it won't. That's the power of play is you can try so many different things just by moving things in and out of animate blocks, changing values, adjusting nodes, adding new things, super easy to control and play. So now double tap to reset. Nice. And that's how we created a floating action button menu in play where each of the items morph out of one shape and back into another one using glass effects and glass effect container in play. Thanks so much for watching this video. And thanks again to our user who created such a cool prototype that we just had to create a tutorial for it.